Right, welcome back. We have the uh, HD5 gantry roughly mounted. I'm using the same mounting locations that I did with my old HD4 gantry. Just so I can make some measurements on clearances and with the router uh, shown and just see what it is. Um, so it looks like with this new gantry, we're getting just short of five inches of clearance uh, from the gantry, bottom of the gantry down to the top. Now what we'll do is check the router, uh, see uh, how it fits. One thing I did notice is that my words don't match my mouth movement. That's because I re-recorded this for clarity. Uh, looking at the way the router would sit in here, it definitely will not reach the spool board in this location. Um, the gantry is almost all the way down and it just will not reach, not even touch before, um, you know, the bottom of the router would actually touch the spool board. What I've done is relocated the gantry to the top three holes. So I just have a couple of bolts in it just to hold it for measurements. But what we'll do is check and see how the router clears and see if it reaches the spool board now. I went ahead and mounted a V-bit into my router, which is one of the shorter bits. And I will see how it measures up. Now with the B bit mounted in the router, we can see if we can reach the spool board when it's pushed in. And it looks like with the router mounted fully into the brackets, it will reach the spool board. Uh, so you should be able to cut you know, even thin materials at that point. Now with the gantry in the top three holes, we know our router will reach. What about the clearance between the bottom of the gantry and the spool boards? So now we're just short of four inches. Uh, so that could pose a problem if you tend to cut thicker pieces of stock that's up to that thickness. That's something to think about when you're mounting your gantry. Now the gantry improvements are quite extensive. They're still using the polymers in some situations for reinforcements on the side of the gantry. Um, on the, the carriage itself uh, in the bottom but what they've done is they're using a metal backing plate which connects directly to the linear bearings uh, and goes through a, a sandwich of a small piece of polymer and then you have your aluminum mounting bracket for your router uh, the other place is sandwiched between two pieces of metal for your vertical uh, uprights but uh, overall it's a, a lot stiffer assembly Okay, so thinking about it again, I went ahead and decided to mount mine in the middle three holes, uh, just like my old gantry was. <clears throat> now I'll use a piece of MFD in order to fill in the gap if I need it for uh, thinner cuts and things like that. All right, so we have the router mounted now. Um, in order to get it in, I had to spread the bracket apart a little bit with the screwdriver. The uh, bolts that hold it in are a five millimeter hex head bolts going into aluminum blocks so don't over tighten them. The other thing I've done is I'm using case hardened bolts to hold the gantry in. Uh, I like them better because they're hex heads instead of the star drives so it's just a preference. Now with it in this location we have close you know five inches clearance so I have to use a spool board extra spool board uh, for smaller stock. What we're doing now is installing the chain that holds the cabling uh, they provide the chain, but not the hardware to mount it. Uh, you need a couple of long bolts, uh, it's about an inch and a half. I had to put a couple of washers on it because they're a little bit too long. And also they don't give you the uh, T-nut. Now on the cable chain, once you have all the lids open, you'll need to remove a couple of little lids. Uh, one's right here on the end where the cabling enters the chain. So you'll remove that. And once it's in place, you know, it just sits right in it. Um, You'll have that. Uh, the little lids just pop right off once you have them open. Now this chain is not as large as the one on the back side of the gantry. It's just big enough for this cable to fit in, but not the power cable for your router or the hoses or the cabling for a spindle. Um, there's a little bit of space in here, but, but nowhere near enough. 
Now with the drag chain installed and a uh, cable run through there, up under you'll have it where it comes in. There's a magnet here that holds this side on up against the metal plates and uh, keeps it all nice and tight. The other place you'll have to remove the lid is right here where this bolt is as the cable bulges out a little bit over the bolt so the uh, lid will not close for it for the drag chain. Now for the rest of my cables, the way they're run, uh, as it comes across that drag chain, I have it come down and I'll have it run up under my board. And I just have a couple of clips under there that's holding the cables in place to keep them out of the way of the drawer. So now for the power cord, I have an extension on the back of my controller is a couple of feet long, which brings the power out a little bit. The cable as it comes up on the side of the gantry, I use a couple of zip ties in a chain link fashion so that they're loose and it doesn't, you know, flex that cable real tight in one particular spot, but it lets it move back and forth as the gantry moves. So with the new gantry, uh, they've used a larger screwdriver for the uh, z-axis that changes the distance that it travels uh, for the same amount of time that the old one did so with that there is a new model number we have to put in the pendant to get it travel properly is we will measure the movement of the z-axis with the old model number versus the new one so what i've done is i've set it up at 10 inches I'm going to zero out my z-axis and tell it to move down one inch, and we'll see how far it moves. So it looks like it moved about a half an inch uh, for that particular model. So what we're going to do is we're going to input the new model number and test it again. Okay, so the old model number is 4004 for the HD4. The HD5 is a 4003. So we got that put in. And the same movement, one inch movement, should yield us a one inch change. Yes, it does. So it actually moves down one inch. So that corrects the uh, Z axis.